Also, Lord, please use this story and let it be a blessing for others as well. Thank you for being with us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Suvin. Today's story is about a very special person. Before I start, you need to guess who he is. Here are some clues. He is a missionary, a doctor, and an explorer in Africa. He discovered Victoria Falls. In Africa, he also had a goal to stop the slave trade. And because of that, he is considered Mother Teresa, Neil Armstrong, and Abraham Lincoln all in one. This is his picture. So children, do you know who he is? He is Dr. David Livingston. I hope you guessed it right. Let us continue. Here are some facts about him. David Livingston was born on March 19, 1813 in the small town of Blantyre, Scotland. His father is Neil Livingston and his mother is Agnes Livingston. He was the second child out of seven children. At the age of nine, he received a prize for memorizing and repeating the entire Psalms 119 with only five mistakes. Since his family was very poor, he started working at the age of 10. Despite the hard work, he had the willpower to study hard. So, after work, he will study for two hours at school and at night he listens to his father's motivational stories about missionaries. One night, he told his father that he will be a missionary doctor by serving the people and sharing the gospel with others. Fifteen years later, he began studying medicine and theology in Glasgow and decided to become a missionary doctor. Initially, he wanted to work in China, but because of the opium war, he decided to go to South Africa. There, he met his wife, Mary Moffat. She is the daughter of the great missionary, Robert Moffat. She is considered as David Livingston's greatest asset because she could bake bread, prepare meat, make clothes, candles, and salts. Her main goal is to be useful for the people. Through that, she won the respect of the Africans by showing love to them and sharing her faith. They also had children, but sadly, because of the climate in Africa, the children and mother suffered diseases. So, they went back to England. While David stayed alone to heal people and share God's word to all around Africa. You know, at the time, there were no cell phones, internet, or emails. The only way to contact each other is through writing letters and to receive them will take months. Moreover, if David wanted to meet his family, it will take a long time for him to travel. When he arrives home, his wife will find it hard to recognize him. 
here are some reasons why. First, on one of his journeys in the forest, a tree branch snapped and hit his eye. He was almost blind and suffered many injuries. Second, his legs have many wounds because he walked barefoot in the jungle. Third, because of the constant heat from the sun, his skin color changed from white to dark brown. Another sad thing is that David was attacked by a lion. The lion bit his arm and broke the bone leaving 11 permanent tooth marks. So basically in his whole life he suffered from wounds and injuries. So whenever his wife saw David Livingston upon arrival her heart melts. He would stay in Britain for a few years with his family but his heart is still in Africa. One day he told his wife that he has a strong desire to serve the Africans. He said we need to serve 1000 villages in Africa. They are waiting for us to teach about God. But the wife said, you go first. Our children are still small. So David traveled alone to Africa. When he arrived, he became great friends with the tribal chiefs and got very close with the Africans. Not only did he teach them about God, but he also helped remove slavery. A few years later, Mary went back to Africa to serve God with her husband. Sadly, she lived there for three short months and passed away because of malaria. Dr. Livingston knelt by her deathbed and wept like a child because they were only together for a short time. He brought the wife's body and went back to Britain to bury the body. After staying there for a long time, he went back to Africa to continue his missionary spirit. After arriving to Africa, years later, he got ill and searched for his medicines. But all of them are gone. He was saddened and weak. He just knelt down to ask God to help him in his ministry. He needs those medicines for his health and his missionary journey. After saying Amen, the prayer was immediately answered. A strange person stood in front of him and said these famous words. Dr. Livingston, I presume? David said, Yes, and both shook hands. The man then said, I thank God. Doctor, I have been permitted to see you. David then answered, I feel thankful that I am here to welcome you. The man brought medicines and food for Dr. Livingston. After eating and taking some medicine, David got back his energy. The man's name was Henry Stanley. He was a journalist sent by Britain to find Livingston or bring back proof that he was dead or alive. This is because 
they are not receiving letters from Livingston since he was very busy with his ministry. This is why they sent Henry Stanley to find about him. Back to the story. The two of them became great friends and went on to explore Africa and serve the people. Stanley stayed with David for five months and experienced God's love throughout his time with David. Before leaving, he begged David to come back to Britain with him. But David said he should still serve the people. So Stanley went on and wrote about David's ministry, God's love, his experience with him and that David is alive. David Livingston kept bearing all the dangers starvation and sickness from the exhausting journeys. Within a year and a half, David Livingston got very ill from malaria and internal bleeding. For his final ministry, his followers carried him from one place to another on handmade stretchers. Then on May 1, 1873, he requested his followers to put him in his mud hut and help him kneel beside his bed to pray. The followers did as instructed and waited outside as Dr. Livingston prayed. Usually, after the prayer, David will call his followers to help him up. But this time, the followers still waited for his call. They waited for five minutes, no call. They waited for 10 minutes, still no call. They waited for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour, then two hours. But still, there was no call. The followers then went inside the hut. The light of the candle showed their master not praying out loud. But just his motionless face bowed on his folded hands on top of his pillow, where he offered his last prayer for the deliverance of Africa. He started living his life doing God's work the same way he died while praying to God. While living with sad problems throughout his life, he showed light to thousands of Africans through his medical and theological ministry. You know, upon his death, Britain requested to have his body. After all the accomplishments David has completed, they wanted to give his body a proper burial. The Africans did not want to give his body because he sacrificed his life for them. So they wanted to bury him there. But because they respect the British, they compromised and requested saying, David Livingston's heart belongs to us. He loved us so much. He showed the love of Jesus to us and sacrificed his whole life for us. They said, you are allowed to take his body to England, but we will keep his heart with us. When the British heard about the African's request, they opened the body of David Livingston, cut his heart out and gave it to the Africans. The body was then taken to Britain with a note on top, you can have his body but his heart belongs to 
Africa. His body now rests at Westminster Abbey and his heart was buried under a marble tree near the spot of the current Livingston Memorial. Dear viewers, when David Livingston was a young boy, there were so many ways for him to enjoy his life. He could be a rich medical doctor in Britain, but he chose to live for the people in Africa. He lost a lot of things he could enjoy in his life. His skin color, nutritious food, and a joyful life with his family in Britain. He lost his eyesight. He kept bearing his broken arm which was bit by the lion and many more. Nevertheless, he held on to his goal to be a service for the Africans as a missionary doctor. In his ministry, he traveled 29,000 miles barefoot to 13 African countries just to serve God by sharing the gospel. So, what about you? Are you devoting your life to God? Do you have any goals or ambitions to serve God like David Livingston? What is the purpose of your life? To live for yourself or God? Will you sacrifice your life for your society and God? Dear viewers, how long we live in this world is not the matter, but how we live in this world is the matter. The Bible says in Mark 16 verse 15, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. David Livingston exactly followed God's instruction. Well, I hope you can be like David Livingston to serve God with your talents, skills, and abilities. May God bless you all. I will see you next time. Okay, pray Jesus can live up with them. Live up with them. Pray Jesus, Mary. Pray Jesus. Pray Jesus, Mary. Hey, Nana. Hello, hello. So, 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 my dear, thank you, Kapil. Thank you, Sia. Past year, school teacher, Miss Sia. Sunday school teacher, Miss Sia. Friends, 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 Miss Sia. अद्भुत कृपा परशुद्धात्म देवन कन्या सहवास शांति समाधान प्रति बिडक वरिद्ल सड़े स्कूल टीचर्स वर्ग कुटाल रिसोर्स पर्सन वर्ग कुटाल अबर्वर्स वर्ग कुटाल चूँ वर्धि चेयन का